All right, so let's get started. Um, we're continuing with the binomial theorem. Okay, and in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at finding a specific term. <coughs> so here we want to find the term that contains x to the power of 4 when simplified of the binomial expansion of x squared minus 2 over x all to the power of 11. So first, it's a good idea to write that we have a as being our x squared, b is negative 2 over x, and then our n is 11. So we know that the term that we are looking for is tk plus 1. I'm just going to make this a little clearer if possible. Okay. <clears throat> and then we also know that this term is going to have an x to the power of 4 as its variable. The numeric coefficient does not make a difference. All right? So the only part we actually care about is right here. Okay? So we've got t of k plus 1 and we don't really need to worry too much about this. What we're looking for is which one has this guy, okay? So which one has the x to the power of 4? Wait, why is this n Because um, I don't really care about the coefficient, the numerical coefficient. So I can just use, I'm just looking for anything that's going to affect the power of x's. So I don't need to worry about the negative and I don't need to worry about the uh, 2 either. So from here, I'm going to use 1 over x. Okay? Okay. So now, this equation here allows us to find the value of k. So if I have x to the power of 4, I've got x squared, and then n is 11, x to the power of negative 1, I'm going to change that from 1 over x, and then I've got to the power of k. So now I just need to work this out. So I've got power to a power here. So multiply these two together. 22 minus 2k, and then x to the power of minus k. Now I've got 2 multiplying together, so I can add these exponents together. And the whole time I need to be thinking, okay, this has to be equal to x to the power of 4. Okay, now I can solve the exponents since they are both to the base x. Drop the base. Okay, and then solve for k. So minus 22 minus 18, minus 3k, divide both sides by negative 3, and we get k is equal to 6. Okay, so which term actually contains um, x to the power of 4 when k is equal to 6? <coughs> k is equal to 6, so the term that I'm looking for is is the k plus first term, right? The seventh term. Okay, so now I'm going to do that up here. And I'm going to look for the seventh term. So t7 is, now I'm going to use n, c, k, a to the power of n minus k, I'm going to use the whole thing, okay? So k in this case is, k is 6, right? Because this is t, uh, k plus 1. So n is 11, and then c, 6, x squared to the power of 5, 
and then b to the power of, well, I guess I should write what b actually is, negative 2 over x to the power of 6. Okay. 11c6 is 462, then x to the power of 10. And now here I've got negative 2 to the power of 6, and I've got x to the power of 6. Okay. Um, and then just combine like terms, simplify, and then you've got your answer. So x to the power of 4 for here, this x to the power of 10 over x to the power of 6 gives you x to the power of 4. And then what is negative 2 time, uh, to the power of 6? That's 64. Okay, so then multiply these two together, and we end up with 2, 9, 5, 6, 8, x to the power of 4. All right? So since we have that, we know that we've got the correct term, right? So this is our term that has x to the power of 4. All right, now, I'm right there, okay, <clears throat> all right, so now, if we are continuing this, find the term that contains x to the power of 4 when simplified of the binomial expan expansion of x squared minus and then 2 over x all to the power of 11. So another strategy <coughs> to do this would be to find the value of k is to find the pattern formed by the variable. So what is the actual pattern when we're looking at our terms. So if we have x to the power of 2 for the first term, we're going to have 11 as our first power here, right? And then 1 over x. Now I'm just caring about the x's, so I'm ignoring the negative 2 that was in the numerator. That's the power of 11. So this is, this comes down and this simplifies to be x to the power of 22. Now let's look at what the second term would be. So it would be x to the power of 2 to the power of 10 and then 1 over x to the power of 1. So how does this all simplify? So that's x to the power of 20 over x, which is x to the power of 19. So what's the difference of the exponents from here to here? We're minusing 3, right? Now, uh, just to verify that it's the same pattern, we're hoping that it's going to be the same thing, Let's try this next term. What is the exponent on the x going to be? x to the power of 2 to the power of 9, 1 over x. That's going to be squared. So it's going to be 1 over, oh, sorry. That's going to be x to the power of 18 over x to the power of 2. And that's going to be x to the power of 16. Does that fit the pattern? OK. So if we didn't want, to, didn't want to do what we did before to figure out which term it's going to be, we could simply count it out. So my first term, second term, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and I could just continue the pattern starting at x to the power of 22. That's going to be x to the 19, x to the 16th, and my next one is going to be take away 3 from that power. So just take away 3 from each previous power, and that's going to tell me which term contains the x to the power of 4. So that's another strategy, all right? So once you've figured out that it's the seventh term, you can go and figure out what the actual coefficient of that term is by doing what we just did on the previous page. Okay. I'm going to hit stop on this video, and then we're going to do the next one right away.